Hello. In this tutorial for App Lab, we're going to learn how to create a time and date stamp on one of your apps. So we're going to start by going to Design, and we're going to create two labels, one for the date and one for the time. So I'm going to drag out a label, and I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to change the ID, and this is how we address this object in code. I'm going to change it to LBL date. Since it's a label, I'm starting with LBL, and I'm using date to remind myself what the purpose of this object is. I'm going to get rid of the words in here, so I'm going to delete that. Now I want to change the width and height, so I'm going to change the width to 250 and the height to 45. Then I want to make a bigger font size, so I'm going to change the font size to 40. And finally, I want a border around it so I can see where it is, even when I don't have it selected. So I'm going to go down to border width and I'm going to select one pixel. Okay, I'm just going to move this around just a little bit right up there. Next, I'm going to create a second label. This one I'll name LBL Time. Get rid of the text again. I'm also going to make this 250 width, 45 height. Also going to change the font size to 40. And I'm going to give it a border width of 1 pixel. So those are pretty well lined up. Now let's go to code. So let's write the code that'll get the date and time in these. I'm going to go to code. First, I'm going to create a timed loop. So I'm going to grab that from my toolbox. I'm going to go down to control. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to timed loop. So by default, this is set at a thousand milliseconds. So this timed loop, once it starts running, will run once every second. So the first thing I have to do inside this timed loop is I have to create a date object. And I have to declare a variable to store that date object. So I'm going to say var current date equals new date. So I've created a date object there and it's stored in the variable current date. Now I've got to work on the date part of it. So the month, day, and year. So I'm going to create a variable for month. Month equals... So my variable that's holding my date object is called current date. So I'm going to say current date dot get month. Open close parentheses. Now this is going to get the month, but it's going to be off by one. Because it counts January as zero, February as one, and so on. So I'm going to add a plus one so we correct that. Next, I have to get the day. So I'm going to create a variable day equals, again, from the date object, which is stored in the current date variable. I'm going to get the date. This one, I don't have to add one to. Finally, I'm going to get the year. So I'm going to say var year equals current date dot get full year. And then again, open close parentheses. So now I have the month, day, and year stored in three variables, but I have to format it. Because I don't want it just kind of these numbers. So I'm going to make a final variable, formatted date, and I'm going to set it equal to first month. Now I want a dash, so I'm going to concatenate a dash. So I want the dash symbol so I have it inside the quotation marks to let the computer know that I want a string of the dash. And again, I'm using this plus where it's going to put the number and it's going to concatenate, which means push it together with this string, which is a dash. Next, I want the day. And then I'm going to concatenate that again with another dash. And then finally, I want the year. And I'm going to end with a semicolon. Now I've got my properly formatted date in the variable formatted date. So i got to set my label with the value of formatted date. So I'm going to say set text. I'm going to call this method. And this method needs two arguments. The first argument is it needs to know what object I want to set. And the ID of that object, in this case, is LBL date. And the name of the object needs to be inside quotation marks. Then I have a comma to let it know I'm going on to the next argument, and I have to put the variable in. So the variable I need to send to LBL date is formatted date. Then I'll end it with a semicolon. By the way, watch out for the uh, yellow triangles, those warn you. Sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's not. 
So I'm going to highlight here and saying missing semicolon. That's because I took off the semicolon there. So sometimes it'll say you've created a variable and haven't used it. And that may not be a problem if you haven't used it yet. Also pay attention to the red squares and highlight those when you get one of those. Because that means there's an actual error that you definitely need to deal with at some point. So we've created the code to put the date up here. Now let's create the code to put the time in this other label. So we're going to create a variable to pull out the hour. So we're going to say hour. I'm going to set it equal to the current date dot get hours. And it's H-O-U-R-S, plural, end with a semicolon. Next, we got to get the minute, ver minute equals current date dot get minutes. Again, there's an S on the end. And finally, we got to get the seconds. So we're going to say ver second equals current date dot get seconds with an S on the end. So now we've got three variables and it's storing a number with the hour, the minute, the second. So now we've got to format it. So we're going to create another variable. We're going to say var formatted time equals hour plus, and then we're going to concatenate a string with a colon there, because usually we use colons to separate the hour, minute, and second. So then we're going to concatenate that with our minute variable. Then we're going to add on another colon. So we say plus quote unquote colon. And then finally, we'll concatenate on the second. We'll end it with a semicolon. Then we'll go to the next line. And let's see what our error here is. It's saying formatted time is defined, but it's not called in your program. So that's just warning us that we haven't used formatted time. It's not a problem, but this is going to go away after we type line 13, because we're going to use the variable formatted line in line 13. Okay, so we're going to say set text. Again, we're calling the set text method. We've got to pass it two arguments. So LBL time, because that's the object we're sending it to. And then what we're sending is the data in the formatted time variable. We'll end it with a semicolon. So now let's run it. When we run it, the timed loop should go through all these commands once every thousand milliseconds, which is once every second, and then update the date and time. So we run it. So there we go. We've got today's date. We've got the time. Notice this is 24 hours time. So it's uh, a little after 10 where I am now. So we've got, you know, 22 hours, 1 minute, and 43 seconds. And there you go. That is how we create a date and a timestamp in the App Lab environment.